Hello, welcome to another devlog. Uh, it's been a little bit longer uh, than usual since the last video because I've had a less productive couple of weeks than usual. Partly because of extenuating circumstances and partly because I think um, as I'm reaching what, fingers crossed, is sort of the midpoint of this project, uh, I'm feeling a little bit uh, lost amongst the trees, you know, there's so many different aspects of uh, the game to make, uh, so many things that uh, still have to be done that it's it's daunting and every time I work on something I think ah. <laughs> I could be doing something else uh, every time uh, I don't finish a thing 100% I think ah. <laughs> uh, is this ever going to be finished? Every time I make a decision which uh, extends extends the amount of time this is going to take, I think, I don't know. and um, I'm I'm trying to um, reduce the scope and um, control the amount of time this thing is going to take because it's definitely at this point taking longer than I initially estimated, which I think is just a given of every game project. It's like always like that. Um, I am still making progress, but I, I've been struggling a bit with bits of it recently. Anyway, um, that's by the by, really. I'm going to show you some stuff that I've been working on. Um, a bunch of what I've been working on has been like code and stuff in the background. I've been rewriting my uh, input, my keyboard input code, because, oh, here's the thing. Um, one of the first scripts that I wrote on this whole project was, well, okay, so I started out with the, with the intention, as I guess everybody does, of, okay, this one's, I'm going to really make things organized. I'm going to get much Better, a much better handle on um, object-oriented coding and use that to organize stuff better. The very first thing I wrote on this project was a, a color-coded debugging tool. Maybe not the very first thing, but in the first day I wrote this color-coded de debugging tool, which has been phenomenally useful, where just every time I have a debug message, it comes in a color that identifies where it comes from. Fantastic. Brilliant. One uh, Another thing I wrote in the first couple of days of the project was the input manager. Uh, okay, I'm gonna, not going to do it like the other ones I've done, or the other games I've done, where this stuff is dealt with all over the place. Uh, I've got one script which deals with all of the keyboards and clicks and things that come in, it's going to make it easy to easier to reconfigure keys, it's going to keep a control on where, what state the game is in, and therefore, all that stuff. I wrote that code, uh, and I wrote the control for one key, the escape key, which enters or exits a menu and stuff like that. And then I forgot about it completely, and this week, while I was um, while I was rewriting the object interaction code where you can you can click on a thing and examine it and move it, um, I was like, why, why have I got all these like 100 bits of codes which say get button press? I was going to do this in one place. So I'm, I'm halfway through the process of rewriting that, which means that if some things don't work, that's probably why, because I haven't finished rewriting that. Anyway, I don't know why I'm talking about that. Um, why, why am I talking about that? Anyway, so one of the things I've been working on, aside from coding and stuff, which I can't show you, is the downstairs apartment, which currently looks like that. And I, I've showed this before a couple of weeks ago, I guess, maybe even a month ago. And um, it had this really garish wallpaper on, uh, sort of a very faux William Morris type design of leaf patterns. And um, I liked it, but uh, I found it cluttered. This is in the video where I talked about the density of detail of, of things. And I have since tried to make that work. I 
made the pattern less complicated and tried it in different variations and things and have finally decided that no, it, it doesn't work. So we've got rid of it. And this is currently how things uh, look. This is currently what we're going for in terms of colour and stuff. And uh, mostly, I think this is much better. Um, it's maybe s a little bit too brown, but I think we've, we've got there. I've got a lot of details which uh, I've been working on, which I'm happy with. I like these light fixed uh, fixtures and the wall fixtures, which match. And there's another lamp over here. I think, uh, I think these are good. Um, chairs and stuff. Here's a bunch of thimbles. Um, this is a clock which tells the real time. So you can, that's when I'm recording this. Um, I don't really know if that's the correct thing to do. I thought about it and I was like, oh, I wonder how easy it would be to implement a, a clock in the game which tells the real time. It turns out pretty easy, um, but um, maybe that's sort of a... Mm, an illusion breaking thing right this clock tells the real world time not the time in the game world you could be playing at night and it's sunny outside and so i don't know maybe i'm gonna fix that so that it it actually tells game time some i, I set the game at a time of day or something anyway there's a clock um there's a couple of specific things i wanted to show you i reworked the code which does object interaction so before uh, I had drawers which you can open and close, and doors which you can open and close, and they were fairly simple scripts um, at the beginning. I've changed them a bit so that they allow for more complicated um, interactions. So this is a sewing box, um, which has a whole bunch of different things which can open and close. And the idea is just to have two states open and closed, but those states can have a whole bunch of different rotations. and. Um, translations applied to different objects and so I'm pretty happy with with that and it allows me to make these slightly more complex interactables which is something that I'm interested in I mean not necessarily focusing on but um, it's important I think that there is a bunch of stuff to interact with this is a a narrative game where um, you are exploring a little world and I think that more than just exploration there have to be things to do in the world so I'm keen that even just getting a nice little animation when you click on the thing that's kind of what I'm doing I haven't finished uh, putting all the stuff in this sewing box so it's a little sparse for now um, but that's one thing I've been doing um, what else? Oh yes, so the other big thing is, here's a bookcase with a bunch of books on. And um, uh, I've been debating in my head how to do this since early in the game. Um, like right at the beginning, one of the first things I modelled in the living room upstairs was a few books on a bookcase. And I made a little comment in the text about how there's not many books because... Well, it fits in with the story that there's not many books. But I knew that I was going to want to put books on bookshelves. And I want you to be able to pick up books and look at them. But uh, how many books am I going to put? And how many of them you can pick up? And that kind of thing is sort of a quandary. And I've got a bit of a, uh, a personal like irritation that I find in games where um, they like... Hmm. There are different versions of this, but uh, in some games you have like loads and loads of books that you can pick up and read. You know, your your RPGs, your Skyrim and that kind of thing. There's books everywhere and you can read them. And you find duplicates, but there's just an enormous quantity of different texts with an enormous amount of stuff in them. Which I would be willing to bet uh, a very large proportion of players never actually read any of this stuff. But there's a certain subset of players who love it, who find all the backstory that's available in these things cool. Um, I do not have 
time nor the inclination to write a whole bunch of books. It's not going to happen. Um, but I still want books as physical objects that you can look at. Uh, I like books. And uh, with the object interaction system I have, you can click on a book and you can have some sort of... Um, some sort of um, like text given to you about the book, so you can at least learn about it. But what I'm not going to do is put a realistic number of books on a shelf and line them all up and you can click on every single one of them. A, I can't make that many books, even if I'm not writing them just as physical objects, I can't make that many. And B, it becomes tedious, I think, for the person who wants to click on and pick up everything to have too many things to click on and pick up. You want stuff to do, but not an enormous number. Um, so I've been thinking about this problem. Another thing I've been thinking about is uh, a game which I absolutely love, and I don't want to be negative about, but I will be a little bit, is What Remains of Edith Finch, which is a fantastic game. It's a game which is partly in inspiration for this one, where you explore a house, your family house, and you discover a story about your family, and it's, it's very cool. I don't want to talk too much about it because I'll give some spoilers, um, but I love this game. Um, in the house uh, that you explore in that game, there are an enormous number of books. I mean, one of the uh, like design uh, ideas that they seem to have gone with is put books everywhere. And they are piled up on the stairs in corridors. The kitchen is full of books. There's books everywhere. And as a consequence, there's quite a lot of repetition in there. And the first, the thing I found was you, you first discover all these books in the kitchen. Oh, cool. Here's a book about Viking cooking. And here's one about uh, sharks. And here's blah, 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 blah. And then you go into the next room and you find the same books about Viking cooking and it was cool in the kitchen, but now why have they got duplicates? And because that's a game which aims for a fairly realistic aesthetic, um, I found it just weird to have those same things repeated. So I want to avoid that like repetition of, of stuff. There, I could talk for ages for that I, and I don't want to. Um, I don't have a timer on screen and this video is already going on longer. So I should just show you what I'm doing. So this is what I came up with as a solution. Here is a bunch of books, but they are treated by the game as one single object. And if you click on it, it'll show you a book, which you can investigate, you can rotate, and that's a book. And if you click on it again, it'll show you a different one. And essentially it has a, um, uh, a bucket full of you know, um, books that I've made. Um, these are all romantic novels that I've invented, but stylistically based on Mills and Boone designs. And the drawings I've made, but I have traced to some extent, to a large extent, from real covers of real romantic novels and that's it and there will be repetition like you're gonna eventually in fact maybe not even eventually maybe quite soon you're gonna see books come up again um but that's that's my solution so books are treated as a big hole and you can click on it a bunch of time and see a bunch of different books and fiddle with them at the moment uh, i haven't done anything particularly interesting with the text about the books uh, I have plans for that to, to make that a bit more interesting. And uh, after making that, I realised that this is a solution for another one of the problems that I had been vaguely thinking about in the back of the background, um, which is how do you deal, or how do I deal with uh, having a lot of objects that can be uh, interacted with? Just because, again, of density of stuff, right? So here in this cupboard which I started work on today um, there are some puzzles uh, at the bottom and the problem I have is that well, a problem I think is that these are just close together so you know I'm not trying to make a, this is a bug uh, I'm not trying to make a game where it's twitchy and you have to have precision or any of that kind of stuff so 
if you want to click on one of these puzzles to look at it, which I can do, let's get rid of that. Uh, I can't get rid of it. So this is a puzzle and this is a different puzzle, but it's actually quite fiddly. And part of that's because of my bug where the outline shows through other objects and doesn't always disappear. But partly that's just because these objects are too close together. In fact, they're a bit misscaled as well. Right? They need to be bigger. And there's other places where that's true. I have kitchen cupboards full of different boxes and products and things. And I want you to be able to look at all of those things, but I don't want you to be pixel hunting to find them. So I think I'm going to start treating cupboards and stuff in the same way that I treat books. That uh, here I have a stack or that you can see of uh, puzzles, puzzles and games. You click on one and it shows you a random one out of the out of the list. Um, so yeah, I've probably been talking too long already. So that's just a couple of bits I've been working on. Um, things are progressing. I guess I started out this video fairly dourly, but um, I think things are going well. It's just uh, having a little bit of a mid-project slump. And um, yeah, I think that's all I wanted to cover. Um, toodaloo. Thanks for watching.